Hi, today I'm here with Megan Leahy, the mother of three daughters, a certified parent coach, and the author of Parenting Outside the Lines. Tell me about your aha parenting moment. When I met Dr. Neufeld, um, I went to go see other speakers, even though he was the keynote. <laughs> and he got up and I had been unconsciously or kind of consciously searching for why was it that some parents seem to have an easier time with their kids? And it didn't seem to be about strategies or theory or charts or, you know, vases full of marbles. They just seemed to have an easier time. What was this about? And, you know, long story short, he has an entire um, institute based on the power of connection really. Um, and it, everything like dominoes, just like everything made sense after that for me. It didn't, I'm not saying it didn't get easy. <laughs> it didn't get easier, but it, all the puzzle pieces started turning. So did it change you as a mother? A hundred percent. Yeah. Ha tell me how old your kids are. 16, 13, and 10. And is there one story that you you can share about applying what you learned in that program to the way you changed your parenting? You know, my eldest daughter is, she's 16 and she is amazing and um, sassy and as am I, and we can get into it, right? And um, I think, you know, I met him quite a few years ago, so she was a bit younger, but the sassiness was beginning. And before working in that institute and becoming like a certified facilitator and really taking it in, um, I would have doubled down on the sassiness. I would have uh, been more punitive. I would have taken it personally. I would have uh, required an apology from her and required it first, kind of really like immature, but I don't think that far off base for a lot of parents. I also would have really assumed that this was like somehow a character flaw for her, built like crazy stories. And after I met him, when we would have fights, I would just, you know, she would be really like throwing, give me the business. And I would just say, I, I see your anger. I love you. I'm not going to let like stand here and let you like verbally abuse me anymore, but I'm here for you. You are my girl, no matter what, there's nothing you can say that changes how much I love you. Even when you're saying how you handle it after learning takes so much self-awareness. Yes. <laughs> so how do you, <laughs> so first of all, congratulations. Thank and you. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> And so that kind of awareness does come from behavioral stuff, like hanging up stickies that say, <laughs> tell her you love her, right? Having an alert in my phone, like stop bossing the kids around in the morning, like tangible behavioral things, behavioralism 101. And then the inside work of deeply recognizing that I am not going, I'm not here to control my kids. Like they are not here to make me happy. That's my job. To be a good parent is to constantly live in the paradox of that this person has been kind of delivered upon you and your job is to just not screw them up. They're just unfolding. So we have the paradox of kind of leaving them alone while also teaching, instructing, guiding, and providing boundaries and consequences. So we're, if you're parenting in real time, you're swinging back and forth, really. You're kind of dancing, doing a very bad like waltz to letting them be who they are and stepping out of the way and then getting, um, and then getting in there enough to keep them safe to get to their eventuality. Right, not letting them go to bed with their phone in their face, not you know just buying Doritos twenty four seven because that's what they eat, not letting them game until three o'clock in the morning because they you know that they can't click themselves off. So you know in the Newfeld Institute, 
and this is not, you're not going to be like, wow, what a new concept. I'm sure you've heard this before, but we are gardeners, right? It, the child is the plant. All of their potentiality is already in the seed. Like who they can be to their greatest ability has already occurred in the nature, right? So our job is to just bring that to fruition. So some kids need more boundaries, some kids need more compassion, some kids need more exercise, some kids need more alone time. And we're all gonna do that imperfectly. I find a lot of freedom in the paradox. And knowing that, that your job is not to push them in a direction, but that they're already wired to go somewhere. Right, my yeah. job is to keep my eyes open, right? So my middle- I love that, that's beautiful. Yeah. My middle child is a gifted, gifted artist, has nothing to do with my husband. I never put her in an art class. It's just who she is. Great. And um, she wants to go to an arts high school. And then she started saying, you know, I don't want to go there. I think I want to go to my sister's high school, which is a great high school. And I'm like, why? And she was like, I, I don't know about that audition. I, what if I don't get in? I said, oh, okay. So you're worried you'll, you'll fail. She's like, yeah. I'm like, yeah, no, we're not doing that. Right. And she's like, but I'm like, you can maybe still go to your sister's high school, but we're going to, right. So it's this keeping my eyes open to her real desire versus her fears, where to push, where to leave alone, and then saying sorry when I get it wrong. So you have to give an apology that is specific and no, I'm sorry, but. Right. So if your kid was the jerk and you responded by like doubling down or taking something ridiculous away or really going for something, I mean, just being mean. And you're like, I'm sorry, but if you hadn't done that, then I wouldn't have to be mean to you. Or I'm sorry, but you're impossible. Or I'm sorry, but you know, we're all sick of each other. We're all been in this house. If you can stop that and really just own your adult reaction, right? When you yelled at me in the kitchen, I responded by yelling back. I'm the adult. I'm sorry I yelled at you. And it doesn't mean like, let's say your kid comes into the kitchen every morning and, you know, grumbles at you and is rude to you, right? It, that doesn't mean that doesn't need to be addressed. It just doesn't need to be addressed like in a back and forth of anger, right? It needs to be like later when things are good and you're walking the dog. So, hey, listen, every morning you come down and, you know, I get it. It's hard. It's morning. It's nobody wants to be awake, whatever. But you know, you kind of treat me like shit. <laughs> and um, I'm not down with it. So what else can we do? All right. Um, that conversation can be had. Um, it just, there's so little that needs to be done in the moment that parents think, I don't know. We just culturally think we have to, I think the famous saying is nip it in the bud there might be more value in the moment of de-escalating. Totally, totally. I mean, the amount of walking away, the amount of, I think I left something in the um, basement, I say. When the kids were really little, they must have thought that I had like some kind of memory issue because I'd be like, I left something in the car and I would just like sit in the car and read a New Yorker. <laughs> But I still have to walk away so that I don't do damage. Back to just don't do damage. Right, do no harm. Right, don't make it worse. But it is really mature work. It's, and I don't come to it naturally. Um, it's very exhausting. It's, yeah, it sucks. <laughs> well, I mean, sometimes, you know, sometimes you just don't really want to be the grown up, And yet, you have to. Totally. Yeah. Totally. And sometimes I will announce to the house that I'm going to have a tantrum. I mean, I did like two, two days ago. I'm like, everyone come to the living room. I'm about to have an MFing tantrum about the SHIT in this room. And they were like, okay. And I'm like, here it goes. <laughs> and so of course my husband's like, okay, thank you. So let's help mom. <laughs> I do like to have, I, I like to announce a meltdown and then people can join me in the meltdown. We try not to like curse at each other and yell at each other, but maybe like screaming, maybe throwing something. 
The first chapter in your book, Parenting Outside the Lines, is about leaving the cart in the grocery store when your kids were younger and having meltdowns. Is there an equivalent to that that you could tell parents of teenagers? Yeah, that is a, that is a chapter about shoving 10 pounds of you-know-what into a five-pound bag. That's about, um, I, we do it all the time with our teens. It's like when the teen finally says, I've been playing soccer for 10 years. I'm so burnt out. I want to quit. And we've always said you can quit when you want, right? We've always said that because we're like a great parent. And we've always said it's your life. We just want you to be happy, right? But we don't mean it. Because now our identity is caught up in their soccer playing, right? And the team and college or whatever, right? Um, and that's that's that kind of like expectation where we start like pushing our kids toward what we want while we're kind of talking out of both ends of our mouth. My daughter danced ballet forever and ever and ever. She was a gorgeous dancer. And I was always like, it's fine if you quit, it's fine. And I really thought I meant that until she quit. And then I was like, but are you sure? No, 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 we're good, we're good, we're good, right? Well, do you think? <laughs> you know, I caught it, I caught it, and I just named it. But um, kids are quitters because of an, of an underlying fear of failure right? And you just got to get to what that is. Is that in them or is that being put on them both? You got to kind of. Yeah. Rough. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's complicated, but I love the idea of the parent looking at what's driving their reaction because then you can actually do what's best for your kid. If you can, you know, acknowledge that. And for teens of parents of teens, you can be really awesome with this because you can say, you know, everything in me wants to both support you in your quitting because it's your life and everything also in me is completely tied up in what you're doing. I'm having what is called like, you know, cognitive dissonance, you know, which is the essence of maturity, which is to hold two opposing thoughts at the same time or feeling. Okay. Here's my last question, which we got from a parent um, yeah. right at this moment. Life is so challenging for us as parents. So unpredictable, one day they're in school, the next day it's virtual. Um, and then there are these kids who we're in charge of, not in charge of, but we're, you know, we're in charge of, yeah. we're, we're watering them in your anal to your analogy. Um, mm -hmm. And how do we find the, the energy to do that watering of our kids when we're depleted? You know, I hate the saying of, you know, put on your mask first so that you can, the reason I hate that saying about, I'm sure everyone's heard it, you know, the airplane thing, put on your oxygen mask first so that you can take care of other people. I kind of want moms to put on their oxygen masks first because they're a human and they deserve it. Not simply because they have to take care of other people. I want you, I want parents and mothers especially to just see themselves as worthy of self-care because you're alive. In that case, self-care, whatever that means, um, I like it when people say what will help you, what will help you flourish, not just survive. I don't like the idea of flourishing. I like white knuckling, barely making it through until I get really sick. That's like more my MO. So I've been doing this thing where I take naps every day. It feels so lazy, so self-indulgent. But if you have older kids, you can take a nap. I want parents to take it easy on themselves. I also want to remind parents of teens that um, you've kind of done the hardest work. You can trust a little bit in what you've done. So if the first three years are the most important, and then the first five, and then the first seven, right, is kind of like setting that kid up for success <laughs> in some ways. Um, you can take your foot off the gas and really like focus on like two things. So like right now, like for my 10 year old, it's 
uh, regulating TikTok and getting her outside. I'm not going to go crazy on the food. Choose what you're going to go for and choose where you're going to let your standards go. Um, because otherwise it's untenable. <laughs> yeah. Well, so I hope everyone listening finds their own nap, whatever that looks like. And thank you, mm -hmm. Megan Leahy, so much for being with us.